Hi, this is Darren Lyle. Well, for the arms of this character, let's take a look at what faces we think will be used. What I'm going to do is select a few faces here, and that's what I'll use to extrude out the arms. Uh, but which ones should we use? Let's take a look at maybe these faces right here, these six. Let's see if that's going to work. I'll come back over to the uh, character screen layout and let's take a look at this. That looks pretty good. If I replace these with these two and then took a look at that, now those look like that wraps around the back of the character a little bit too much. So I think I will go with these right here. And that's what we'll use. Now, of course, yours may be different depending on how many extrusions you had coming down toward the waist and, of course, how many edges you have coming out of the head. But generally speaking, you should be able to find um, a collection of faces that you can use for the arms here. So with these selected, I'm going to go ahead and just delete them. Delete faces. And there we go. Now what I want to do is just come into vertex mode and begin trying to make this more of a circular opening. And in fact, I can even turn off the subdivision surface modifier for a few minutes just to begin taking these and moving them around and trying to get them evenly spaced and generally speaking in the proper size and placement for the beginning of the arm. Now I'm going to come to the 3D view here and I'm going to try and move these out a bit so they're a little bit more in line with each other. All right, I think I've got it pretty well laid out. I think what I'll do is add that subdivision surface modifier back and take a look at it. Yeah, that's not too bad. I think that'll work. So what let's do now is take this edge and I'll go back to my character layout again. I'll scale in the X just a little bit to kind of flatten this out some, just a little. I may need to go back and take a look at my 3D view real quick just to make sure I didn't totally mess anything up. I think I'm okay there. And maybe scale that out just a bit. There we go. So now I can begin extruding out for the arm. So I'm going to hit E and pull out just a bit. And I don't want to come too far here. I just want to come out just a little bit. Because anytime you have a place on a character that's going to bend, like an elbow or a knee or a shoulder, you should really try and have at least three edges at that joint. The center edge for the joint to bend and then two edges on either side to hold the shape. So you can see here I've got I've got one edge here kind of around right here you can see and then I've got the center edge or what will be the center edge of the shoulder and then I'm going to extrude one more out and call that kind of that other third edge that is going to hold the shape of the shoulder there. All right, so let's take a look at that and see what kind of a mess that we've created. <laughs> it's not too bad, but let me go to the front view in this view here. And what I'd like to do is just begin pulling some of this up. And I'm going to turn on my proportional editing tool right down here. And if I hit the G key, I can scroll the mouse wheel for influence and just move it up just a little bit like that. So you may want to come through and just try and get some nice smooth curves on the shoulder area here and behind the arm. It's always good to do this and to make adjustments as you go because once you get it all in place it's very hard to go back and adjust it all. All right, so I've done a little adjusting around the shoulder and the arm here. I think we're ready to continue on. So I'm going to select that edge again and go back to my character screen layout. And let's work on this a little more. Now, I've got the arms in kind of a relaxed T-pose. And I think that's the way I'm going to keep them for now. 
I don't think I'm going to come out straight um, for a T-pose. There are benefits and drawbacks to that. Um, the benefit, I think, to having a T-pose, a straight T-pose, is you can import it into things like Unity a lot easier. Um, and it may be easier to rig, but once you get it rigged and begin moving the arms down, that shoulder area can be can look awkward and deformed. So I've kind of evolved to liking a relaxed T-pose now so that once he's rigged, um, that shoulder area doesn't look odd. So anyway, let's keep going here. And I think what I'll do is extrude again and start bringing it down and I'm going to rotate it some and also actually why don't I scale in the X a bit to flatten this up a little bit like that and then rotate it down and scale it some. Now you may need to come back and scale and move and rotate the previous edge as well as you go. Alright let's grab that edge now and extrude it and bring it down Rotate it a little more, scale it in a bit, and let's get it right around in here. So that's going to be that dip in the arm muscle there. We'll use it for that, like that. All right, let's try it again. Extrude, and I'll bring it to say here, and we can scale that in some. Try and adjust it here as well. So it's just a matter of scaling, rotating, moving until you can get it about the way you want it. And again, and here we're going to begin those three edges for the elbow. So I'm going to begin, this is the first edge right here. Then this will be the edge where the elbow will actually bend, like so. And then this will be the next edge to hold the shape of it. And then I'll give it one more extrusion down into the glove here. We may need more, I don't know yet. There we go. Now the great thing about the glove here is I don't have to connect the fingers with the arm. That's awesome because that's one of the hardest things to do, I think. Um, so let's take a look at it in the default view. Yeah, it's looking okay, but we've got a lot of work to do because, of course, we've just kind of extruded down haphazardly, not taking the time to make any adjustments. So, I'm going to need to come through here and do some point pulling to get this arm looking a whole lot better than it is. I think I'm going to hit this arm with the smooth tool just to kind of smooth this out a bit so it isn't quite so glumpy. <laughs> Is that a word? Gloppy, lumpy, something like that. Let me go to the Sculpt tool here. I've got the Smooth tool already here, and I'm just going to try and smooth this up just a little bit in here, in among the armpit, and down here. There we go, something like that. Now I can begin pulling points back out to get the uh, shape I want but it just kind of helps smooth and even out those edges in the arms there. Now if I take a look at the arm back here, it looks like we could do some work back here, but one of the things I can do is while I'm here, let me just kind of um, make a little piece here that is going to be the elbow. Let me just pull this out. I want to make sure I know where the elbow is. So there we go. We can say that that's going to be the elbow. We can also say that this could begin to bend a bit as well. So let's say we uh, take this part of the arm. I'm going to press Control and click and s drag select an area here. We may even be able just to bend it slightly like this, just to get a slight bend in the arm. We're going to need that when we rig the character. So we might as well get some of that in there now. All right, so we've got a little bit of a hint of an elbow here. That's good. We've got a slight bend in the arm here. I'll go ahead and take this edge here and pull it up into 
the arm a bit, kind of for an armpit. Just begin to hint at that some. And maybe some of these points can begin to come out a bit as well. Now I'd like to bring this area in just a bit. And if I go to the proportional editing tool and choose enable, and if I hit G, you can see I've got that influence here. But if I move it, you can see that it's moving the torso as well. So what I can do is come over here and instead of choosing enable, I can choose connected. And that will only influence what is directly connected to the point I'm moving around. So let me just expand this just a little bit and maybe I can move these in just a hair. Move them up some. All right, well I think in the next video what let's do is begin moving down, creating the hips, and um, maybe we'll begin on the legs. So thanks for watching. I'll see you then. If you'd like to learn more about Blender, then join me for my Blender Scene Creation course. In it, we'll create this animated scene of a mech descending into an underground tomb. As we go, you'll be introduced to Blender's modeling tool set as we build the mech character and the environment. We'll talk about manipulating objects, the difference between object mode and edit mode. And as we begin modeling the mech, we'll discuss more advanced topics, like cutting one 3D object with another using booleans. We'll talk about object origins and parenting, creating geometry with the bridge tool, and creating tubes or pipes with Bezier curves. We'll create the elements of the environment, the pillars, the walls, and we'll add more detailed scene elements along the way. Once the modeling is complete, we'll talk about UV mapping, what it is, why it's needed, and how Blender's UV mapping toolset can help you UV map your 3D objects quickly and efficiently. We'll take a look at Blender's Cycles render engine as we add the materials for the mech and the environment. We'll use the free open source image editing program, GIMP, to prepare and edit our textures and apply them to the 3D models in the environment and on the mech. Ultimately, we'll want our character to move, so we'll go over preparing the character for rigging, creating the armature, and how to set up an advanced foot roll rig. We'll create custom shapes and make sure all our controls are parented and organized, ready for animating. We'll begin animating our character flying into the scene and dropping to the ground. We'll use Blender's graph editor and dope sheet to adjust the timing, and we'll talk about keyframing and tangents as well. Once our scene is complete and we've animated the character, we'll do some final tweaks to the lighting, as well as have some fun creating a jet flame effect for our mech's jetpack. And in the end, we'll render out the animation and export a movie file. Bringing an animated scene to life is an amazing process. And once you know how to do it, you can bring any of your ideas to life. So join me for Blender Scene Creation. Learn more at DarrenLyle.com.